What are some challenges that you faced after learning? In a Western society, people have this view that Muslims are X, Y and Z, but they don't know the truth. How did your family react? How did my family react to me reverting to Islam, being a Vietnamese Muslim? I didn't tell her for three months and I left my throbe on my bed. I come back in, she looks at it, what's this? And I'm like, okay, mom, I need to tell you something. She looked at me and she said, since uh, we're in Mecca right now, has life become easier since you reverted to Islam? On my first time going to the mosque, I wanted to study every single religion that, that are out there because there's so much, which one's the one? Everything had truth, but it didn't really tick that box until I found it. Oh bro, you're wearing dresses now? Oh bro, you're wearing this now? What would other people think? And then I actually left Islam for last. What was one thing that made you flick the switch? What made me turn my life from partying, smoking, being with my friends, to becoming, as much as I was getting this much monetary gains, I was getting this much uh, woman, I can't live like this. Assalamu alaikum Hakim. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Can you take me through it by I started from the beginning? What were some of the things that like began your interest in Islam? From the beginning? From the beginning. So from the beginning, when I was a little kid, I always had this inclination towards something. I didn't know what it was, but I knew after death, there can't be just blackness. It can't be just nothing. So as a kid, I feel like everyone had this curiosity, right? And as you grow up, you're like, you think, who made us? How were we made? What is out there in the world? What is out there in space? Is there a God? What, how are humans made? So I had this natural curiosity. And, and then, so back then, that was fitra, yeah. right? Yes. And that fitra was that inclination towards Allah. So as I grew up and I grew up, external society started coming in. Right? They started talking, maybe your parents, uh, my parents was Buddhist, you know, growing up in the West as well, and you had your friends, you had your teachers, so all this external society kind of made me uh, uh, go away from that a bit, right? Okay. Were they practicing Buddhists, your parents? They went to temple, okay. but not as much, right? Okay. They were more agnostic. Okay. Growing up as a teen, as a primary school kid, I always prayed, and I always, every time something went wrong, I would always, for some reason, last resort, I would actually put my hands out and, and actually ask someone out there, something, okay. something out there. And that was just pure natural instincts, mm -hmm. right? So it's crazy that, you know, that right there and me realizing it now that that was Allah speaking to me, but I just didn't have the knowledge of it. So when did you first make contact with the idea of Islam? Yeah, that's a very good question. When I finished high school, I wanted to be the best version of myself. And how do, I, how do you do that? By increasing your knowledge. I knew that religion had a lot of knowledge. So I wanted to study every single religion that, that are out there. Because there's so much, which one's the one, all right? I studied Christianity, I studied my roots, Buddhism, I studied Judaism, and then I actually left Islam for last. Because I was like, yeah, most people do. The propaganda around it and the stigma and the perspective around it has has this type of perspective towards it. And uh, I learned about Christianity, did all my research. Everything had truth, but it didn't really tick that box until I found Islam. Islam for me had evidence, had receipts. Everything just felt right. When I asked a question, they had a response. When I asked something that was offensive, they were calm and they were like, yes, I'll show you. So it was more of a, open hands. Mm -hmm. they, they allowed me to feel invited rather than come, come, come or you're going to go to the hellfire. Come or you're going to go to hell as Christians would tell me yeah. or uh, Buddhism would tell me you have to detach yourself from the, the whole world and not eat me and, and you know what I mean? Islam was practical and it was logical for me. So I did a ton of study. I watched YouTube, I read books about it my friend actually gave me the Qur'an. For me, I'm a person where when I put my foot in something, I put two feet in. 
So I wanted to, when I found out that it's, there's something here and I don't know what it is, but I can just feel it. So I'm a barber and I would, I would meet people from all walks of life, including Muslims. Every time I would meet Muslims, we would talk about God because I'm a very deep thinker and I, I'm a very open person. So when people tell me their beliefs, I like to listen with an open slate. And when this Muslim brother told me about Islam, I was very, very intrigued. The next time he came, he gave me a Qur'an. And I was like, wow. For, so for the next two to three months, I read it. And the second chapter of the Qur'an, Surah Baqarah, I read this one verse and it said, those who disbelieve, we have covered their heart, sealed their eyes, and put a veil on themselves. And that made me realize that society has put a veil and a seal around your eyes to see the truth. And at that moment, I saw the truth. From then on, I talked to the brother, scheduled a time with Sheikh, Sheikh Badon, went into the mosque for my first time ever. He said to me, look around the mosque. There's angels looking at us right now. And that's what it was that gave me that intrinsic feeling that I couldn't describe to you right now as I speak because it's, it's, it's an internal thing that you can't elaborate. I couldn't even, I didn't even say anything because I was speechless. Talk to Sheikh for 20 minutes, I look at the clock, it's actually been two hours that we spoke. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> and by the end of it, he said, do you believe that there's one God? I said, yes. Do you believe that that one God sent messengers? I said, yes. Then you're a Muslim. I said, then let's do it. So at that exact moment, on my first time going to the mosque, I reverted that night, the 13th of March, 2023, 10 days before my first Ramadan. Uh, how did your family react? Specifically, mom. So I reverted, I didn't tell her for three weeks. And on the last week of Ramadan, I was going to go to Taraway prayer. Went, took a shower, and I left my throat on my bed. And I come back in, she looks at it, what's this? And I'm like, okay, mom, I need to tell you something. Wow. I need to cl coming I'm coming out the closet. Out the <laughs> and I, t I told her, mom, you know that I've been studying Buddhism, you know that I've been studying our faith, you know I've been studying, doing all this research. She's seen my book. I told her, Mom, I'm Muslim now. I reverted three weeks ago. And I told her about it, I went to deep about it. I said it with a calm voice. And she looked at me and she said, I trust you. In my heart, I said, Alhamdulillah, because I was so grateful. I had a beautiful mother that was understanding, that was trustful. My family is just my mom, me and my little brother. As the oldest man in the house, I felt like I had a duty. I had, I had a duty to fulfill in my family, to provide for my, my little brother and, and provide stability for my family. And her realizing that, that I've made this decision is not just because of hocus pocus. It's because there was a true depth intent towards it and a true human purpose. Yeah. And that's how my mom reacted. Beautiful, that's very beautiful. Alhamdulillah. How was your first Ramadan? My first Ramadan, <laughs> if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Like I said, when I go one foot in, I go, got to put both in, all right? I want to do it properly. So I fasted, it was so tough. But even though you're not eating and you don't have energy, you had a spiritual energy. And that spiritual energy lifted me throughout the whole Ramadan. And during then, it allowed me to see myself for who I am because the Shayateen is the one that's locked up. Shayateen is Satan, the devil. He's locked up during the month of Ramadan. So that means that whatever sin you do, whatever thoughts in your head, whatever negative thoughts I had during then, was not from the devil, it was from me. My inner self, I had voids that I needed to fill and Islam was the one that filled it from my heart. 
Oh, that's amazing. I was just thinking about how after just after reverting, you got 30 days of practice yes. without share planning yes. interference. <laughs> that's yes. beautiful, yes. inshallah. Yes. Uh, I'm going to finish off with some questions that some of the boys are asking, inshallah. These are the boys asking. Okay, let's right? do it. Yeah, let's the boys do it. Trip. Uh, what are some challenges that you faced after reverting? The first one would come straight to mind would be what will other people think? Uh, in a Western society, people have this view that Muslims are X, Y, and Z but they don't know the truth what was my mom gonna think what was my friends gonna think oh bro you're wearing dresses now oh bro you're wearing this now so that was the thing that naturally humans are inclined to be a part of the pack and being a part of the pack in the west and in australia can be good or bad <laughs> but I had to realize and I had to make that decision that if I wanted to become and be on the, the path to the truth, I had to make sacrifices. And I learned and built a mental model that I've made a lot of sacrifices in my life. And if I make this one sacrifice for what I believe and that I felt in my heart, making that sacrifice for what other people think for Islam is a no-brainer. What was one thing that made you flick the switch? Okay. What made me flick the switch to turn my life 180 degrees from partying, smoking, being with my friends, doing X, Y and Z to becoming on this path towards being a righteous Muslim. That point was when I said, I can't live like this. It's just a cycle of you having your fun and then going in a rut. Yeah. When you go in that rut, you don't, your heart is impure and your heart is contaminated. That's how I felt. I felt a void in my heart. As much as I was getting this much um, monetary gains, I was getting this much uh, woman, it left a hole and a void in my heart. So I wanted to find something that will fill it. And I looked at doing self-improvement. I looked at doing gym, got my body up, still felt it got my mental up with self-help books, still felt that emptiness inside. So when I found the truth, I, that's when it flicked. This is it. And that's when I'm going to go two foot in and do it as best as I can. Beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Last question. Has life become easier since you reverted to Islam? And has it brought peace and calm to your life? Of course. Life as a Muslim is very easy. But it's also, the duality of it is that it's also hard in its way where we're grateful for it. We are grateful for the hard, but it becomes easier for us because Allah makes it easy for us. And the benefits is whatever situation you're in, whatever circumstance, negative, positive, it is meant and written for you. It is a script that your life has been already written and you are playing out that script. So that can either be reassuring for you or you can either be scared of that. One, if I die like this, I'm going to, 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 to hell. After I became Muslim, my family relationship got better. My relationship with my mom has been, never been better. My relationship towards my brother, my business grew. Within a short period of time, in six months, to one million followers in the matter of six months. And Alhamdulillah. Allah, inshallah, yeah. all to be used for the right yeah. reasons. Alhamdulillah, yeah. it's, it's amazing. And all right, so one more question, inshallah, since uh, we're in Mecca right now. Alhamdulillah, we've done our Umrah. Uh, we've been in Medina for quite a while. Alhamdulillah, spent some time there. How do you feel being here for the first time? Arriving in from Melbourne to Saudi Arabia and in Mecca, instantly when I came into the masjid I felt it you can you can't you cannot feel it you come in and you already feel the vibrations you feel the aura in the in the air and to complete my first ever umrah as a revert Vietnamese Muslim is honestly I thank Allah every day to put me on this path towards Islam and completing umrah was a thing that I just know it's going to be a thing that's going to be great for me when I come back because I'm going to apply what I've learned and what I've connected with Allah 
and I'm going to do my best and make the intention to maintain that consistently wherever I am, Melbourne, traveling, anywhere.